I see this question pop up a lot, especially with the changes to OCU Laser and how input frames are capped at 1000. We all know that FPS and refresh rate can affect your gameplay, but how much does it actually make a difference? That's what we'll be exploring in this video. Specifically, I'm going to test the in-game frame millimeter at optimal and power saving, and also test my monitor on 60Hz versus 144. I'm mostly trying to convey feel and accuracy performance versus how it looks, so the gameplay footage shown won't really make a difference to what you're seeing, especially since everything is being rendered at 60 FPS. Yes. I decided not to go any higher than optimal because that and it's been recommended not to go higher than a thousand anyway because of possible micro stutters that can occur. For the test, I will be playing this map 5 times for each combination, and I'll also include a bonus test to see what hard rock looks like. I wanted to have a map that's simple enough to where I could play it comfortably to replicate my scores, but not so simple to where it's a basic core jack map. That way, the main thing that's affecting my scores will be whatever delay I'm getting. Lastly, I want to mention the skin. This might be a placebo thing, but some note skin designs just look weirdly smoother than others. Comparing the two circle skins that I have, it's something about the lighter outline that makes it look almost like it's jittering or screen tearing. The darker one is almost unnoticeable with the outline, and it looks way more smoother as it scrolls. I've gotten used to it after a while though. An even older skin I used to use, which was way more detailed, looked even more jagged to me. I'm bringing this up because this is pretty much what your eyes see if you ever played with 144 and then 75 back to back. You can immediately notice the missing frames that you wouldn't have noticed before switching to 144 in the first place. Starting off with this first test, these are my default settings. Everything feels normal, I was getting a good ratio, and I almost thought I should run the whole test using Hard Rock to really see the difference, but decided not to. We're also going to be looking at the unstable rate, and I think there would still be enough variance without having to increase the timing window, and we'll see as the tests go on. Now on to 288fps with 144hz. Immediately I could notice that it wasn't as smooth. Now as I said, you can't really see that, and I might end up recording at the highest settings anyway, but this is something that my eyes got used to during the test. Surprisingly, I was able to get my best score so far, with only two perfects, but the rest of the scores seem worse on average compared to 960fps. The main thing I noticed was that the UR bar seemed more stable through most of the map when playing on this setting, but the overall unstable rate was a higher number. In fact, I could barely get under 61. Now for 60 hertz and 960 FPS. And oh my goodness, how do people play like this? I'm not exaggerating, it looks like a freaking slideshow. I'll try to have some sort of visual representation on the screen here. After my second playthrough, my eyes did adjust a bit, and really thinking about it, I'm still able to make the same number of inputs per second, so getting a low unstable rate is still possible. The main issue with this setup comes from the fact that it's just physically hard to read, which can then translate into bad accuracy, depending on how dense or complex the patterns are. So this can be one of those things that you get used to. For 60Hz at 288 FPS, right off the bat, I tied my best score. It's something about the inputs having less variance that it really feels more consistent in a way, but it's still my highest max 320 count. A little bit strange. This reminds me of playing on a keyboard with a lower polling rate, but everything else about the keycaps and switches are so smooth that you're able to get better scores, despite the accuracy or unstable rate being worse. Ended off this set with the 1x, but still above 60 unstable rate. Now, just for fun, I decided to also run trials on unlimited FPS for both refresh rates, just to see if there's any noticeable difference. I was getting an average of 0.25 milliseconds of delay, which is about 4000 FPS, and while the screen itself is so rough, the game feels noticeably less laggy. Before we do 144 with unlimited, I did want to try 75Hz. For a lot of people, they may have the option to overclock their monitor to 75, and I wanted to know if there's any realistic benefit in doing so. The main thing I noticed here is that I did better on 60Hz when it came to 288fps, but when I switched to 960fps, it felt pretty normal, and I was doing quite well. But really, the differences were quite minimal, so if you do have the option to overclock to 75, then sure, why not? It'll look a bit nicer, but don't go out of your way to specifically buy a monitor like this. Lastly is unlimited on 144, and it looks super smooth, especially after coming right off of 75. Almost too smooth, not much of a difference from 60Hz. Now we have all of this data, and I don't really know exactly how to make sense of any of this. If we look closely, all this seems to tell us is that increasing the refresh rate from 60 to 144 means that we'll get on average 2 to 3 more Marvelous. But that's not exactly what I felt while playing. This is why I wanted to include the unstable rate. This tells us more about the consistency of each hit, though it doesn't reflect the score in any meaningful way. It's essentially an indicator to how much I struggled with reading and playing the map. Since it was a simple map, and I pretty much memorized the general structure, there isn't that much variation 
variation, but expand this to more complex maps that are much longer, and it would make much more of a difference. We see the most difference when it comes to switching refresh rates, and switching frame rates on the same refresh rate gives us a small amount of difference, which could honestly be randomness. So the best option will probably be getting the highest refresh monitor that you can reasonably obtain, and then playing around with the in-game limiter option, and finding one that looks good enough for you, which would more than likely be optimal. But as we saw, the differences are super minimal, and whatever frame rate or refresh rate you play on, you'd probably get used to it over time anyway, even if it's quite low, so don't let whatever hardware you play on discourage you from training accuracy. Obviously, these tests weren't super in-depth or NASA levels of recording. Realistically, I probably should have done hundreds of trials on a wide range of maps, but I hope it was helpful in any way. This does prove that even on lower refresh rates or frame rates, it's not hindering your performance on a technical level too much as far as inputs go, but it is ugly like this and more annoying to read. Leave a comment below if you have any thoughts or questions. <laughs> and he does blow my nose.